classes and classes and classes. So you guys, I'm going to use red because I feel like it's really great for showing the differences. When I, I essentially my way that I tend to paint red is I just start with the really my, the brightest red I can possibly find. I just mix a little bit of black and a little bit of black, and that's how the old masters did it. And, I, and it's like if it's not broken, man, I'm just going to keep doing the same thing. The paint that I'm using, just for anybody who's wondering, is called Chimeta Color. It's from a, an Italian company. If you guys want to try it out, you're more than welcome to. Oh man, this thing is toasty. Okay, sorry. You guys are also getting like a little quick primer on how to base coat something, I guess. Something too that I get questions about is mixing the paint. When you're mixing the paint, um, I like to have my two main piles and I grab from them. Just make sure you're grabbing just a little tip of the paint at a time. I'm probably gonna need just a little bit more because I want there to be a difference, but I don't want that difference to be so stark that it's like it's, it's not making a difference. Okay, so uh, part of the reason why I'm using a big brush is so that you guys can see it more easily. Um, big brushes are great though for covering like larger surfaces. So you don't want to use like your size zero or your size one to paint the side of a tank, right? And so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to kind of press the brush down so that it's doing this. See how it's laying on its side? And I'm going to push. And so you guys can see this on my finger. I'm going to push and lift up. See how it deposits paint like that right there? Look how I was talking about on the board. Right, everybody see that? So now we're just gonna do the same thing here. We're just gonna push, push again, just so that we make sure that we're covering the entire surface, and then we're just gonna dry it. Why are you pushing in that direction versus the other? Um, and that's where I want the shadow to be. Okay. So like with this one, like I'm pushing towards where I want the shadow to be. Um, you know, if you want your highlights in the other way, you just push the other way, right? And push is always the side of the brush? Always the side. Always always like this. If you're doing this, that's incorrect. And if you're doing this with the tip, that's also not correct. These are actually both brush strokes, but um, this is this is very different. You kind of need to get a, a good handle on this before you really want to uh, uh, do this. I've seen people where they're actually like really good painters, but they're just not using the right technique with their brush. And that's all it takes. And like it's like something clicks and they become incredible painters. So. so then again, I'm kind of hunting for this line. It's very faint. I kind of think it's right here. So I'm going to come in just a little bit. I'm going to push again. All right. Well, this one you'll be able to see the line much better. All right. So can you guys see that line? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's not necessarily a bad thing. I know a lot of times when we're painting and we see a little kind of like stain mark like that, we're like, oh, oh I ruined it. Um, you just got to kind of keep working. And then I'll show you guys how to fix it if it's too dramatic. So again, coming in just a little bit. Push it. I'm just going to go all the way down to pure black. You can do a lot of little pushes as well. It, it, there, you have to do one big, you know. You can use the same tone sometimes, twice in a row, just because you, you build uh, you can, Building you're not going to get full coverage the first time around, so the second right. time around you're going to get much better coverage and then you can shift the mix a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Same concept with base coat. A little bit, yeah. Good. Except we're just trying to build the, those transparent <laughs> layers on top of each other, um, kind of like in the transitional area, and uh, we want the most coverage where we want our highlight or our shadow. Is the black priming and the white sort of sun drop uh, norm a standard for you? Uh, come again? The the appearance of kind of a black priming 
and then whiting on top of that. Yeah, so I like to prime. Um, I like to prime with in a zenithal method, where you have like a black primer like this, and then you use like a rattle can or an airbrush, and you kind of take an angle, right, and you airbrush from that angle, and it, it's really great because it helps you establish like where your highlights and your shadows are going to be initially. And when you paint the model, you're not having to think so much about it. Like you still kind of want to think about it, so you understand the way that light is interacting. But yeah, essentially, does that answer your, does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. Excellent, 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 excellent. I've been making it up as I go along, so I can a fair number of questions. Nothing wrong with that. So is that a got pretty it. extreme example you're doing right there? Is there is that about the way you do it? Yeah, yeah. Um, this is a little bit more extreme, just so that you guys can see the, the large variation. Um, sometimes, like now, I'm just going to use straight pure black. Um, sometimes I will do this and just glaze it a ton. Um, and again, I'm doing like larger jumps so that you guys can also see them. Sometimes the jumps that I'll do, like this, is too extreme as well. Like this, this first one because there was just a little bit of an imbalance between yeah, yeah, like totally. the first one. And so like sometimes you can, just to show you how, you can fix this with a layer, you kind of have to hunt for it a little bit more. You can get this and you can kind of push like up and down right in here and see if that helps fix it, right? Right. And so this isn't even correct either. So we're just gonna kind of come up a little bit more and we're just kind of trying to paint over that line a little bit. And so you can do corrective actions with layers if you really, really need to. Um, but that decision is up to you. And you can also, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to use glazes and glazes will significantly help you fix uh, a lot of these issues. So, I'm just gonna do one more pass and I'm just gonna call it good either way. So um, let's go ahead and pass that around and take a look at it. And then I'm gonna have you guys go back and do it while it's going around. Do you guys have any other questions for me? So um, the figures there you said were by another class. They were sketched with with highlights and shadows. Yes. That's why they're so extreme. That's why they're much right more now. stark and extreme. And the uh, I, a lot of them are actually very good. Um, but by base coats, by base coating, and then layering. Are you not just covering that over? Um, so, so. Kind of. It depends on how intensely you want to do that. The reason why I'm having you guys do like a very, very solid base coat is that it just will show you the changes that you're making a little bit more. And that's kind of the goal is to, to let, like, for me to show you guys, it's the best way to do it. And then for you guys kind of learning the technique, 